Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame. From 1995 through 2002, there were as many 50 home run seasons as in the preceding 100 years. Roger Maris's record of 61, which had lasted a generation, was eclipsed six times in just four seasons. Whispers of the use of steroids turned into widespread charges after an investigation into Balco and congressional hearings. Were some of the game sluggers cheating? Were there other factors at play? Before we start our countdown of the top five reasons you can't blame steroids for the home run explosion, let's examine why the performance enhancers are credited for the outburst. Breaking ball and he hammers it to deep left field. This one is going to go into the upper deck. There's something universal about the home run that people love. Well, chicks dig the long ball, they say. Back and throw. People want to see power. That's what amazes people is power. Home run is a knockout punch. It is the alpha and the omega. Swinging. We sit at the edge of our seats at baseball games until they're over because at any moment, everything could be turned upside down. From Eckersley, Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. I don't believe what I just saw. It's the bomb. Although he didn't invent the bomb, the Sultan of SWAT was the first player to use it with frequency. And baseball was never the same. The popularity of the home run goes back 80 years. I think when, when Babe Ruth changed the face of baseball by hitting home runs, by single-handedly out-homering other teams, uh, that brought fans into the park. Ruth, in a lot of ways, created the home run. And the home run became this pivotal point in our mind as an incredible moment in baseball and sports as a metaphor for the country. Ruth's single-season record of 60 homers held for 34 seasons when it was broken by Maris. And not until 1974 was the Babe's career total of 714 eclipsed by Hank Aaron. Other than Ruth, who did it four times, only 10 players hit 50 or more between 1920 and 1993. Then, seemingly overnight, home runs began flooding the market. Before 1994, there was an average of two home runs per game in only one season in Major League history. Since 1994, there's been an average of two home runs or more per game every year. Sammy Sosa is the only player in the history of baseball to hit 60 home runs three times. Swap out, there she goes! In none of those seasons did he win the home run title. In 1998, the home run reached new heights as Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa chased Maris's mark set 37 seasons earlier. Swing and a shot into the corner. It might make it. There it is. 62, folks. And we have a new home run champion. The breaking point sort of was the discovery of Andro in Mark McGuire's locker. And I guess at that point, you started to, to really question what was going on. While the words performance enhancers entered the national sports dialogue, the home run derby continued. He's done it again. McGuire broke Maris's record by hitting 70 homers. And three years later, in 2001, Barry Bonds surpassed Big Mac. By the time Barry Bonds hit 73, you had to know. And if you didn't, you were really looking the other way, or you believed in Santa Claus still. Steroid use in baseball leaped on the media's front burner in 2004, when a federal investigation revealed that Balco, a California-based drug distributor, had provided performance enhancers to major league players. Then in 2005, a book by ex-slugger Jose Canseco blew the whistle on himself and others. Everyone was doing it. 80% of the league was doing it. 
and growing. There's every evidence that enormous numbers of players were on steroids during this period. Um, so that hangs over everybody who's in the period. Can you blame steroids for, for the power boom in baseball? More than anything else, without question. Because so many guys were using, baseballs were flying everywhere. It was just a huge, 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 huge factor. There are many aspects of the baseball game which can be act impacted upon by steroids. First of all, home runs. Lean body mass increases. Bat comes around with more acceleration. The ball goes further. Players were always going to look for that next edge. And I think that's where steroid use really became more prominent. Oh, my gosh. The home runs were flying out of the park. If management is paying you to hit the ball out of the park, if they know you're taking steroids and winking at it, and by the way, the guys you're up against and the other team are doing the same kind of thing, why, you, you need to do it just to, to stay even and to keep up. Not since Pete Rose was accused in 1989 of betting on games had baseball come under such scrutiny. In March of 2005, Congress held hearings on the use of steroids in sports, requesting the testimony of several players. I have never used steroids, period. That summer, Palmero was suspended for using steroids. Rafael Palmero was the talk of baseball just a couple of weeks ago with hit number 3,000 of his career, but news of a positive drug test Monday could threaten his legacy. Clearly, you can blame steroids for the home run explosion. It's been proven through grand jury testimony, through Balco investigation, through a book that has yet to have any libel problems. I think that the steroid scandal today is the biggest crisis, the biggest mess baseball has had to confront since the Black Sox scandal. I think you have to throw out all the home run records. I don't trust one of them. And not only that, but I think that they were put there with long-term, premeditated, coordinated cheating. The steroid scandal of the 80s, 90s, and today, I believe, will go down as the greatest scandal in baseball history, maybe in sports history. In 2005, Major League Baseball implemented stricter testing for steroids, though it did not include blood testing or testing for human growth hormone. Here now are some reasons that didn't make our top five. It's the best of the rest. The iPod. Technology has made hitters smarter. The more knowledge you have in hitting, the easier it becomes. I think the hitters today have an advantage because of technology. They can go in after every at bat and look at the at bat on video. Hitters can take every split-fingered fastball thrown in a game, break it down inch by inch by inch, see what they did wrong in their swing in that game, come back next time and knock that splitter out of the ballpark. They've all got the physical talent, but if you can make yourself better mentally and know what's going to come in, you have a better shot at hitting it hard and far. All of the technology favors the hitter. They can make you hit the ball farther and hit the ball longer, and obviously hit the ball out of the park. This one's gone. Our other best of the rest. Power for profit. Owners, in an effort to restore the game's popularity, which fell after the strike in 1994, encouraged the proliferation of the home run. There's no question that Major League owners were complicit in this whole, let's get some more offense, let's get some more people in the stands, let's make some more money. Everything that could possibly be done to help hitters was done, just as in the 1930s during the Depression. Baseball said, we got to jack this sport up. So you do it with home runs. Everybody was profiting by the, by the new home run generation. Nobody wanted to tip that over because they'd all lost their share of dough during the strike. Maybe if we hit more home runs, more people are going to show up, and we're going to make more money, and the game is going to get healthier. That's exactly what happened. Dennis Tankersley. With the addition of four teams to the majors in the 1990s, the talent on the mound was diminished to the point where hitters had a distinct advantage. Tankersley, like dozens of other young prospects, got a rude awakening. From 2002 to 2004 with the Padres, Tankersley had a 1-10 record with a 7.61 ERA. Dennis Tankersley kind of embodies this whole dilution of pitching over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years. And there are a million Dennis Tankersleys out there. I think expansion had an awful lot to do with uh, the dilution of talent and the fact that there were more mediocre pitchers giving up an awful lot of home runs. Since these last four expansion teams have come into the game, you've seen 
you know, guys hit 50 homers like it's like it's nothing. And, and even 60 and 70, 15, 20 years ago, nobody had a chance to hit that many. It's too much good pitching in the league. Here's the pitch to Toriyama. He hit him right in the middle of the back. I think there's only so many guys that can rise up to the talent level of the big leagues. And the pitch to Goodwin. And it's outside, ball four. He walked Goodwin, a run comes in. And I'll tell you what, about 80% of the pitching I could see might not even make double A. And here comes Bochi. Time for a change. You have pitchers that are rushed through a system because there is a lack of quality pitching. If you have a left arm and you can throw over 90 miles an hour, you're going to be in the major leagues before your 21st birthday on most teams. There's a lot more younger pitchers in the league. Uh, they make a lot more mistakes than the veteran guys. The pitch to Bonds, and Bonds hits a long one! To deep right field! This one is a monster! It is out of here! Off the scoreboard! When Barry Bonds is hitting a monster 500-foot home run against Dennis Tankersley, there's a reason. And it's not because Dennis Tankersley is having an off day. It's because Dennis Tankersley is a triple A pitcher. I've never seen a guy hit one off the scoreboard here. Did reason number five help convince you? If not, here's reason number four. Honey, I shrunk the strike zone. Size of the zone matters, especially if you're a pitcher. I think if you want to make a case for what created more power, what created more home runs, you might look at the strike zone and how the strike zone shrunk between the 1960s and the 1990s. I've noticed a change in the zone. I definitely think it's smaller than when I first came up in 1989. It's definitely gotten smaller. I mean, the umpires have destroyed the game with the way they're controlling the strike zone. The strike zone is between above the knees and just above the belt, and that's wrong. You're going to have this monster thing going on with home runs as long as this continues. Oh, my goodness. How far is that one It's getting more difficult to pitch, and if you have to get an extra strike in the big leagues, you're going to pay the price. He got it. While umpires had squeezed the strike zone, batters were encroaching on the inside part of the plate. The pitchers own the inside part of the plate. Make no mistake about it, they always have and they always will. But the body armor that a lot of players use on their, their arms or elbows frequently is in the strike zone. When you get batters up there with you know three levels of armor on, it's gonna take that part of the plate away a little bit from the pitcher because you know the batter has no qualms whatsoever about getting hit with a pitch. And once they take the inside part of the plate away from you, you're actually out there. You're exposed to the power power hitters. If you don't establish the inside part of the plate, you give up home runs on pitches you shouldn't give up home runs on. These guys who played 25 and 30 years ago were every bit as good as these guys are today. It was a different strike zone, different era. Mickey Mantle hitting 500 home runs back then, he'd have hit 700 with the strike zone. And I mean, maybe more. Bats and balls. Harder wood and tighter leather add up to more home runs. Uh, you look at the equipment uh, from the old timers to uh, what they're using today, uh, the bats are very hard, very well made. Well, I think the equipment is better these days, and, and maple bats are, are, are used throughout baseball, and it's a, maple's a very hard wood. The maple bat, uh, the bat has been dipped many times, so it's, it's more springy and powerful. If you hit that, the ball on the screws with a maple bat, it jumps off that maple bat like you're hitting it with a brand new titleless driver. How hard are today's bats? Hard enough to do the job, even when they break. Busted his bat, and Carnacion is back. Can you believe that? Shattered the lumber and hit a home run. Oh, I've seen that a lot of times. Not, not just once. I've seen that 10, 15 times. Guy will hit a ball right on the screws, and the bat will break, and the ball will still go 30 rows deep. Beyond the merits of maple over ash, the balls appear to be increasingly more resilient. Don't let nobody ever kid you or try to say to you, oh, no, this is the same ball we had. Yeah? If it's the same ball, I'll take you that ball that they're using today and put it right up under the light for you and show you the strings against the leather. In the old days, I used to back up behind the fishes, and for fun, I'd rub the leather and make it loose. 
<laughs> Try rubbing this. You ain't gonna rub nothing. I went to Penn State University, and uh, they used the same equipment they used to look into the earth to find oil. And they analyzed baseballs throughout the century. And you can see the core is different. It's more rubberized. The density of the ball is different. And I've talked to players that played in the 80s and now that are still playing, and they say, man, you don't even need to hit these balls now to get them out. I don't think there's any question that uh, the ball's wound tighter myself. I just wish we wouldn't kid ourselves about it. Yes, it's a live ball. Well, if you have a harder ball and a harder bat and those two forces meet, you're going to get a greater force, and the ball's going to travel further. We got all that, baby. With three strong reasons now in the books, here is reason number two. Friendlier confines. Baseball's retro architecture. The new stadiums are designed to produce more home runs. You know, every sport wants more offense, and baseball did it without changing rules. They just built smaller ballparks. Well, really, in the 90s, we really saw an explosion of new stadiums, which was wonderful. Uh, but many of these stadiums were hitter friendly. Starting with Camden Yards, everybody wanted a Camden Yards. Well, Camden Yards was a better hitter's ballpark than the old Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. A much better home run hitter's ballpark. They keep building these parks smaller and smaller. I hate Camden Yards. Sorry, Baltimore, but I hate Camden Yards because it's a little bandbox of a ballpark. I mean, you get new stadiums, balls just jump out of those stadiums. You don't have to be a big guy to hit them out of those parks. There are certain parks that pitchers don't want to go into. Number one's Colorado. Colorado, I mean, that's the poster child of hitters' parks. You just hope you can sneak through a four-game series out there and get out without getting you know, your brain damaged too much. And this ball is a good look. You won't see it for long. Balls fly out of that stadium. I'm thinking of making a comeback myself. Line to left field, and there's another home run. Look at the ballpark in Houston. The left field home run alley is minute. I mean, a decent fly ball is a home run. Definitely Texas. Back is QT. It's just an easy, easy ballpark to hit home runs in. You use the ball solid, it's gone. The Yankees have just cracked their fifth home run in the contest. The game has changed. It's a new era. These new ballparks that they're built are more hitter friendly. Fans like home runs. People are designing parks have made them small, but they've gone way too far. Smaller stadiums are uh, absolutely to blame for allowing balls that would either be outs or doubles landing in the seats. Bo Jackson. He knew that home runs come out of the weight room. Bo with a two-run homer, his first time up here tonight, and hits this ball deep the right center field, way back. Forget it. I think that baseball took a turn with Bo Jackson. I think Bo Jackson changed the way the game was played. He was the one who came out of football and started uh, pumping iron, and in doing so, uh, really cast away the idea that players could not lift weights. And this is in the mid-'80s. This is really before the weightlifting kick really came in. And I think players looked at him and said, look how big he is. Maybe if I start to lift, I can look like him, and I can hit balls to where he hits them. And I think that started a real craze of, of guys getting bigger and stronger. Bo was among the first to change the old-school notion that weightlifting was bad for baseball players. I, I came up in 1970, Harmon Killebrew. I never saw Harmon Killebrew lift a weight. We weren't allowed to have weights. I mean, our exercise was a cut-up inner tube, and you'd tie them together and be a rubber band, and you'd exercise. These weights used to be a no-no. Now you go in every major league clubhouse, they have a weight room somewhere with the Nautilus machines and everything. You never saw players in the old days working with weight. To me, this, this is a tremendous thing that has come into baseball, is the weight programs. You know, I, I think that's what's happening in baseball today, and I don't think it's all steroids. I don't think that you can necessarily say that steroids are a direct correlation of the uh, size and the strength of people uh, now versus 20 years ago, but I definitely think that you can say the increase of home runs is in direct correlation with the availability of different weight training techniques. You gotta pump it higher and get bigger and stronger to be home run hitters. You take steroids out of the equation, and guys are still stronger. Guys work out more nowadays, they work out year round. The training is better, the medical attention is better. So you take all those factors into, into play and it's not surprising that home runs are up the way that they are. Runner goes, hit well to left field, and that one is gone. 
when you start to add bulk to that, start to add muscle mass and add torque to that, to, to that skill already, then you're going to, you're going to have more home runs. That thing left the ballpark in a hurry. Many of you will still think we've come out of the golden era of better baseball through science, and perhaps we were, and still are. But hopefully we've pointed out a confluence of forces that have led to the record books being rewritten. Thank you for watching. I'm Brian Kenny. In theory, all these guys were off steroids and they were illegal and baseball was cracking down. And the home run rate didn't drop, it still kind of went up.